Before DNS servers were in use, Windows computers used a host file to map IP addresses to an easy remember name, like mapping an IP address to itflea.com. Now the host file still exists, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. On your computer, open Windows Explorer and navigate to the C drive, Windows, System32, Drivers, and etc. Now we're looking for a file called hosts and this file has no extension. Now in order to edit this file you will need to open the text editor with administrative rights. I'm going to use notepad so let's click the windows button and search for notepad. Now right click on notepad and choose run as administrator. The next thing I'm going to do is drag the host file into the text editor. Now we have this host file open in Notepad while running as administrator. So we can now see the contents of the host file and we're free to make changes. As a side note, this file is commonly manipulated by hackers to do what is called DNS poisoning. Meaning they enter a different IP address for a commonly used website like Facebook.com. So a hacker might create an entry for a website like facebook.com, but instead of putting Facebook's IP address, they put in another IP address to a website that looks like facebook.com, but actually steals usernames and passwords. To help you understand how this file works, let's create an entry called my test entry, and let's map it to a loopback IP address. Now, if you don't know, a loopback IP address is 127.0.0.1 and it references the computer that you're currently logged into. Now first, let's open command prompt and attempt to ping my test entry and see what happens. Of course, there is no host named my test entry because our DNS server does not have a record of it and it's not in the host file. So now we're going to create an entry for it in the host file. Go back to notepad and at the bottom of the host file, type in the IP address we want, which is going to be 127 dot zero dot zero dot one and then we're going to press space and we're going to type in the DNS host name which in our case will be my test entry. Now let's save the file and let's go back to command prompt. Press the up arrow to select the command that we just entered and press enter. If you closed out command prompt just retype in ping my test entry. Now we can see that we're able to ping my test entry. We can see that it attempted to ping at 127.0.0.1, and we got a reply. Of course, we could have used any host name or IP address we wanted to, but for this example, I wanted to use something that likely was not in use and wouldn't create any conflicts on your network. So now you understand how the host file works. The last thing we want to do is go ahead and remove that test entry that we created as it's no longer needed. So let's go back to Notepad, and I'm going to remove this line that I just added in. Now I'm going to save the file once again and I'm going to close notepad. Notice that if we go back to command prompt and try to ping my test entry, it will again say it could not find the host. Now an important fact for you to keep in mind is that the host file only affects the local computer and it has no effect on other computers on the network. So if you created a my test entry on one computer and went to another computer and tried to ping my test entry, it would not be able to find it. Each computer only looks at its own host file and not on any other computer's host file. Now you understand all about the host file and how it's used. Great job getting through that and I will see you in the next lecture.